On the eve of the wedding, my girlfriend sent the wrong chat message. I'm fed up. What if I don't want to get married? I feel like every day I spend with him now is torture. It's too painful. He's going to set up the wedding venue today. What should I do? How can I make him break up before the wedding? And when I saw it, I was planning the wedding venue. The messages were ringing, but my heart kept sinking. Is it a prank? After a while, she saw that I hadn't responded and casually sent a voice message over. Anna, why don't you reply to me? The girl's voice was soft and sweet, but with a bit of a fierce tone. It couldn't be wrong. It was Willow's voice, and she was the woman I was about to marry. And Anna is her best friend. Perhaps because I hadn't responded for a long time, or perhaps Willow suddenly realized that she had sent the message to the wrong person. She started to quickly recall the message, as I was stunned. The wedding planner next to me asked, Mr. Wan, which kind of table flowers do you plan to order for the wedding? I looked at the frantic recall messages on my phone, rubbed my temples slightly, sorry, let's pause the planning for today. On the way home, I leaned back in my seat and closed my eyes to rest, but the first encounter with Willow kept coming to mind. Five years ago, at the freshman report, I was there as an outstanding graduate and entrepreneur to give a speech, and Willow participated in the cultural performance of the welcome ceremony. On stage, she was as beautiful as an elegant and proud swan. But backstage, she was sobbing softly when she was discovered. She was embarrassed but also a bit annoyed. What are you looking at? Do you need any help? I asked politely and distantly, ready to be rejected. But Willow unexpectedly said, My foot is injured. Can you take me to the infirmary? Her ears were slightly red, with a bit of awkwardness. Sure, I bent down slightly and picked up the girl on the chair. Her cheeks were slightly red, she gasped lightly, and then hugged me. It was unoriginal really cliche, but she was so beautiful that everything was covered in a hazy romance. When I got home, it was already 7 o'clock in the evening. Willow was lying on the sofa playing games when she heard the nose at the door. She turned her head and looked at me. Her expression had a hint of tension that was not easy to detect. Did you see the message I sent you today? Under her gaze, I hesitated, then said, Sorry, I was too busy today. Willow turned her head, as if relieved then coldly snorted. You came back so late today, I haven't even had dinner. I loosened my tie slightly and rubbed my slightly aching temples. Willow, I'm a bit tired today. Can we order takeout or ask the maid to come man cook? Previously, because Willow was not used to having other people at home, I arranged for the maid to just come and clean regularly. And Willow is a kitchen killer, so I take care of all three meals a day at home. It took me five years to go from not knowing anything about cooking to being able to cook a good meal. Oh, oh, then you rest, I won't eat. A somewhat cold and impatient voice came from the sofa. I knew this was a sign that Willow was angry. If it had been before, I would definitely have gone to coax her, but I wasn't feeling well today, and after seeing the message she sent wrong, I just nodded and went to my bedroom to rest. Then, there was a sound of something falling behind me. I paused my steps but didn't look back. I lay in bed, my head a little groggy. As I was falling asleep, there was a burst of silvery laughter outside the door. I frowned, opened the door and walked out. Willow, I'm resting. Could you keep it down? Before Willow could speak, a man's voice came from the phone. I'm sorry, sister. It's my fault for disturbing your brother's rest. And I even got you scolded. It's all my fault. It's not your fault. I'm just in a bad mood. And you playing games with me is something I should thank you for. Don't worry about today. I'll hang up first. Let's make a date tomorrow. I watched the scene in front of me, feeling a bit harsh and absurd. My girlfriend. In front of me, casually comforting other men. Willow, who was hanging up the phone, cooled her face. George, I just played a game with someone. Are you going to make a big deal out of it? Didn't you see that I'm in a bad mood? Who are you showing off to with that stern face? Is it interesting? Willow, who was sitting next to the sofa, kept nagging, but with a sense of trying to cover up. At this moment, I suddenly felt very uninterested, so I interrupted her and said calmly, It's not interesting. Let's break up. Willow suddenly choked. She was stunned for a moment, then incredulously said, What did you say? Let's break up. You say break up and it's over. Our engagement banquet is about to be held. The invitations have been sent out. Parents and friends all know, how do I explain to them if you break up now? I stood in the dark, unable to see my expression, but what I was thinking was that this was the reason she was cold and didn't break up. 
It's really absurd. People say the seven-year itch, but we didn't even last five years. This relationship is heading for extinction. I will explain to them. You can tell them it's my fault. This is the last dignity I can give her and this relationship. George, you better not regret it. There was a bit of anger in Willow's expression, but I didn't ignore the flash of joy in her eyes. I nodded slightly and looked at the dark night sky outside. It's too late today. You can pack up and move out tomorrow. Willow looked up at me. Her delicate brow and I seemed to have a bit of anger. No need. I'll move now. I was a bit puzzled, not knowing why she suddenly got angry. But I didn't ask too much. Just calmly asked. Your luggage may be a lot. Do you need me to call someone to help? I can pack it up myself. You don't need to worry. After being rejected repeatedly, coupled with the dizziness, I didn't stay in the living room for long. I just took some medicine and went back to my room to rest. I slept very deeply last night when I woke up early in the morning. Willow had already moved all her things out. I looked at the somewhat empty room, just stunned for a moment, then calmly went to the kitchen. After all, everything was expected, wasn't it? I met Willow again three months later. During these three months, I informed the people around me about the breakup with Willow and cancelled the wedding. There were those who regretted and lamented, and those who were indignant, you two were about to get married. And then this happened. Life is really unpredictable. That little drama queen Willow, only George could put up with her, pampered her like a treasure. I just shook my head with a smile, and my always easygoing parents also called me. George, you're almost in your 30s. As parents, we are quite worried about your major life events. Since free love didn't work out, let's go with parental orders and matchmaker's words. We've arranged a blind date for you. Go check it out in a few days. I was a bit headache, mom. I just broke up a few months ago. I don't have any plans to date or get married now. We've already agreed with her parents. Remember to go on time. By the way, the girl's name is Maria. I helplessly held my forehead, but still went to the appointment. But to my surprise, not only did Maria and I have a great conversation, she was actually a classmate of mine. When Maria and I finished dinner, it was already sunset. The weather was slightly cool. I looked at Maria in her lawn dress, after asking for her opinion, I put my coat on her. And it was at this time that Willow appeared. George, what's your relationship with her? Willow walked quickly to my front, her face slightly sinking, her voice raised with a bit of questioning. Willow looked at Maria with a scrutinizing gaze, but the dissatisfaction and anger in her eyes couldn't be concealed. I subconsciously stepped sideways to block Maria, apologizing. I'm sorry miss you, I have something to deal with, let the driver take you home first, about my past with Willow. I didn't intend to involve Maria. After all, it was just a meal in accordance with the wishes of both parents. She had no obligation or need to join this drama. Maria nodded, glanced at Willow, then smiled. Mr. Wong, I enjoy our time together today, looking forward to our next meeting. With that, she turned and left with the driver. George, how long have we been broken up? You've found a new love already. The sarcasm in front of me made me a bit weary. My gaze fell on Willow and the man next to her, not quite understanding. I saw the message you sent wrong. Didn't you always want to break up? I've already done as you wished. Before I could finish my words, I was interrupted by Willow. Her voice had a bit of smugness. George, if you're trying to use another woman to upset me about the breakup, then congratulations, you've succeeded. Of course, during the time we broke up, I also carefully reflected. We've been together for five years. It's normal to have no novelty. But since you still love me, I'll give us another chance. I looked at the charity emerging on Willow's face and suddenly found it somewhat amusing. Why would she think I would always stand still and wait for her? I hid my smile and cooled my gaze. First of all, we've been broken up for three months now, and we're just two unrelated strangers. Why do you think I have to wait for you all the time? And just to upset you by casually dating others. This is not only an insult to me, but also disrespectful to others. Finally, I want to say that we're over. There's no room for turning back. I thought she would understand after I spoke for so long. Unexpectedly, Willow just looked at me, then sneered. George, you better not regret it. After that day, Willow's moments of WeChat began to frequently update her photos and dates with her new boyfriend. According to her in her moments, this is a junior who has been chasing her for a long time. Looking at Willow's smiling face on my phone, some memories buried in my mind surged out. From the first time I saw Willow, 
I knew she was a willful and flamboyant person. She wants to get what she wants and vents when she is not satisfied. Even the pursuit of people carries a sense of determination. After that freshman welcoming ceremony, she asked for my contact information. And then during the freshman vacation, she came to the company where I worked for an internship. Like most people before, she used that encounter to seek a special relationship, like a not-so-skilled hunter, bold attempts, naive sincerity, and not very clever seduction. Lazy summer days, constant cicada chirping, the girl smiled, her eyes twinkling with cunning. Senior, you've fallen for me, haven't you? The girl's eyes were filled with a fine light, her gaze unflinching, filled with a hint of expectation, a hint of unreasonable tantrum. After being indulged, without any guilt, I remembered her recent determination. I bet you're a common man, I bet you'll fall for me. The air was filled with a soft atmosphere and light, I looked at the cunningly smiling girl tugging at my arm, suddenly hoping that time would slow down, such a moment, longer, longer, best extended to the end of time. So I nodded, smiled calmly, yes, I'm a common man, soft lips covered my, I looked at the closed eyes, lifted my hand to wrap around her waist, stepped closer and kissed back, the wind in the world came alive again, rustling across this piece of heaven and earth, fragrant flowers fell from the sky falling around the two of us. I always thought this moment would last forever, but I underestimated the fickleness in feelings. My fingertip lingered on the phone for a moment. Then, I deleted all her contact information. After meeting Maria, she would occasionally invite me out for meals or entertainment. I know, this is not only the wish of both parents, but also Maria's wish. After all, she is the only heir to the U group, but to stand firm, she needs a strong backing. And the cooperation between the Wan and Yu families is one of them. And marriage is the most effective and simplest way to solidify cooperation. Unlike Willow's coquettish willfulness, Maria is more like a bright and beautiful rose. What I didn't expect was that I would meet Willow when I went out with Maria to buy mid-autumn festival gifts. I was sitting in the rest area waiting for Maria to change clothes when the shop door was opened. Willow just barged into my sight with her new boyfriend. She was clinging to the man's arm, coquettishly and softly, looking very intimate. I took my eyes back, my heart was not much fluctuated. Maybe those once die hard vows have been drowned in the daily quarrels. George, a lazy female voice sounded behind me. Does it look good? I turned my head to look back. Maria was looking at me with her eyes slightly drooping, the corner of her lips curved with a gentle arc a black velvet sling dress. Her white and tender skin seemed to glow under the crystal chandelier. Black hair and red lips, so beautiful that it was indescribable. I was a little stunned, then came back to my senses, seriously said, very beautiful. Maria raised her eyebrows slightly, hooked a smile, and joked, good taste. Just as I was about to go pay the bill, Willow came over. After looking at Maria with an unclear expression, she looked at me and said, George, is this your new girlfriend? I walked to Maria's side, looked at Willow calmly, and said, It's none of your business. Willow looked at my expressionless face. Suddenly, there was a moment of panic, as if there was something she couldn't hold on to. This is my boyfriend, Makoto. She held the man's hand next to her, her eyes fixed on me, as if trying to see something from my subtle expressions, but to her disappointment. I didn't respond to her. I just whispered to Maria, tired, let's go. What about your little girlfriend? Oh, sorry. She's your ex-girlfriend now. Maria looked at Willow, whose face was a little heavy, and smiled. I sighed helplessly. How come I didn't notice before that Maria was so wicked? I reached out and took the packed gift box. My parents are still waiting for us. Yes. Today the Wong and Yu families plan to have a meal together to discuss the cooperation between the two companies. Willow on the side. Her eyes slightly red. George, are you going to take her to meet your parents? I had no intention of entangling any more. Just said, yes. As soon as the words fell, I planned to turn around and leave. The willow behind me was a bit paranoid. George, are you going to marry her? Why? Why do you leave so quickly? I didn't answer her. A touch of fatigue and annoyance surged in my eyes. It was she who wanted to break up first. And everything had gone as she wished. So what was she making a fuss about? During the five years of our relationship, my obedience and respect for Willow does not mean that I have to indulge her unconditionally, obey her every command. Even after breaking up, I have to be called by her like a dog. Willow, I'll say it one last time. We've been over for a long time, 
Don't come to disturb my life in the future. If there's a next time, I won't be so polite. Willow seemed a bit incredulous that I would talk to her like this. After all, during our relationship, I had never spoken harshly to her. George, I don't have to have you either. Willow screamed behind me, but with a hint of fear that she didn't even know. I didn't bother with Willow anymore. I just took the gift box and left with Maria. I'm sorry, you had to see that. I rubbed my temples with a headache and explained to Maria. It's okay, I just didn't expect Mr. Wan to be so charming. Your ex-girlfriend hasn't let go of you yet. Is that so? Maybe she just can't let go. She can't let go of the fact that I'm not at her beck and call anymore. She can't let go of the fact that I've moved on so quickly. She can't let go of the fact that I'm about to move on to the next stage of my life. The most important thing today is the family dinner below. Miss you. I looked at Maria and raised my eyebrows slightly. Both parents have always intended to match us together. I have no choice but to pretend to be a couple with Maria. But tonight's dinner is probably a trap. What's there to be afraid of? At worst Mr. Wan and I can make it real. I'm so beautiful. Is Mr. Wan afraid of being taken advantage of? Maria winked at me and teased. I looked at the woman in front of me with bright eyes and white teeth, who was blatantly flaunting herself, and I couldn't help but smile, of course not. Although it's a blessing to be taken advantage of. In the nosy space, there seemed to be an inexplicable emotion spreading in my heart. When Maria and I arrived, both parents had already taken their seats, so this is Maria. What a beautiful girl. My mother warmly took Maria's hand and sat her down. I exchanged a worried look with Maria, afraid that she couldn't handle it, but to my surprise, she skillfully navigated between the parents of both sides, making them all laugh heartily. I shook my head with a smile, subconsciously cut the steak carefully and placed it in front of Maria. When I came back to my senses, I was being stared at by several pairs of eyes. The warm praise of Maria's mother came to my ears. Your George is very thoughtful. He's a good boy who knows how to take care of people. Maria took her mother's arm, bowed her head and smiled. I agree. Looking at this warm scene at the dinner table, an unfamiliar emotion unconsciously surged in my heart, but it disappeared in a flash. It was midnight and we got home after dinner. Just as I was about to open the door, I suddenly stopped when I saw a shadow squatting at the door. Do you have something left here? I looked at Willow at the door, frowned, and asked. I'm not sure if she really left something here, because the day after she left, the housekeeper came to clean. She should have cleared away any unnecessary things. I couldn't help but laugh. It turns out that sometimes, even God is making decisions for you. Why are you coming home so late? Willow raised her head and looked at me gloomily. I was a bit annoyed and said, We've broken up. You have a boyfriend now. What are you still clinging to? You weren't like this before. You never used to be so fierce to me. Why is that? The sound of sobbing came from Willow. If it had been before, I would definitely have been panicked, trying every means to coax her. But now, my heart was calm. Call your boyfriend and have him pick you up. Makoto is not my boyfriend. He's just someone I found to annoy you. George, can we get back together? I promise I won't be a nuisance anymore. I won't mention breaking up anymore. Okay. Willow looked up at me, reached out, and caught the corner of my clothes. Tears kept falling. I pulled my sleeve back and said, indifferently, Willow, you don't really want to get back together with me. You're just not used to it. Not used to having no one to care for you. Not used to having no one to arrange everything for you. Because you found out, after you left me, everything around you is a mess. No. It's not like that. I'm learning to cook by myself. I'm learning to live by myself. I'm learning to plan our future. I'm really learning. Willow stared at me blankly, her eyes already red and swollen from crying. But why didn't you wait for me? Why are you with someone else? I was a bit helpless. Willow. No one will stay in one place and stagnate. If there is, it's only because she can't let go. I opened the door and went in. Before closing the door, I looked at Willow, who stayed in place her expression unclear, for the last time. Don't disturb my life anymore. After that day, I didn't hear from Willow for a long time. Just when I let my guard down, thinking she had given up, I didn't expect that the story she wrote about us as the prototype caused a stir online. She told the story of how we met, got to know each other, and fell in love on the internet, she wrote. He would cross half the city to take me to see fireworks from a helicopter, and I was in a bad mood. 
because I couldn't get used to takeout. He spent five years teaching himself various cuisines. He would tolerate all my temper, accept all my flaws. He was my confidence, my source. And the responses on the internet were mostly about sweet relationships and blessings. When will I have such a sweet love? They must stay together. Otherwise, I won't believe in love. Watching fireworks from a helicopter. So that's how you rich people play. Until she updated another post not long ago. We broke up. He's getting married. They are well matched in social and economic status. One sentence brought the fans' emotions to a climax. My favorite couple just broke up like this. What do you mean by well matched in social and economic status in this era? Is there something wrong with this guy? If you want to be well matched, why did you date the blogger? Is the blogger your trial product? Or just a pastime during your single period? This third party who interferes in other people's relationships is also ridiculous. Originally, her comments could only cause small-scale discussions, but unexpectedly, several famous bloggers reposted her video and commented, the pastime of the rich, dating a first-love girlfriend for five years, but asking for a well-matched marriage on the eve of the wedding, the online public opinion went crazy. And the question, is it important to be well-matched in social and economic status, went straight to the hot search, and the personal information of Maria and I was also dug out. I looked at everything on the internet. My face was gloomy. When Willow called me from someone else's phone, my secretary was showing me the attacks on me and the company by fans and passers-by on the internet. George, I didn't mean for this to happen on the internet. Anna made me open an account to record it. I never thought this would happen. Willow's somewhat choked voice came from the other end of the phone. I pressed my temples, my voice cold. Whether you did it on purpose or unintentionally, only you know, but the trouble you've caused for me, Maria, and the company has already happened. I know, as long as you get back together with me, I'll explain it on the internet. You know, there's no rationality, online public opinion. I did all this for you, George, I can't lose you. It was all my fault before, can we get back together? I listened to the words coming from the other end of the phone, a little dazed. I still remember our one year anniversary. Willow took me to a very small and unknown mountain. She said it was her secret base. The stars were bright that night, but they couldn't compare to the bright eyes of the girl in front of me. She took out the ring in her hand and handed it to me. George, I bought this with my part-time job these past few months. Put it on, and you'll be mine. The girl in front of me was unabashed, her eyes full of expectations for the future. I carefully picked up the ring, my voice a bit hoarse, okay. The wind was gentle that day. Willow leaned on my shoulder, enthusiastically planning the future. George, what if we break up in the future? Before I could answer, the girl in front of me spat out several times. It's impossible. We will never break up in the future. I looked at the puffed up Willow with some amusement and teased, so sure. Willow pretended to punch me and said fiercely, of course, even if we break up, it definitely won't be me who brings it up. After all, I chased you with all my might. The mountain breeze gently blew, carrying my laughter. Okay, let's stay together forever. But it only took five years, just five years. And everything has changed. George, you still love me, right? Let's get back together. I listened to the familiar yet strange voice on the other end, came back to my senses, and said word by word, I don't love you anymore. You were the one who let go first. I warned you last time. Don't disturb my life anymore. You don't have a chance anymore. Willow. I hung up the phone. The beautiful girl in my memory seemed to have put on a mask full of fangs and was no longer the same as before. On the other side, Maria also sent me a message. Mr. Wan, your ex-girlfriend really can't stay still. The picture below was some provocative words Willow said to her on WeChat and that Willow had been following her for three days. I calmly typed, keep the evidence and call the police. After all, the internet is not a lawless place. Rumor mongers should also pay a certain price. Perhaps Willow didn't expect that Maria and I would choose to call the police in the police station. Willow hung her head low, her dark long hair hanging down messily, making it hard to see her expression. This Miss Liu has been stalking me frequently recently, disrupting my life and causing me serious harassment. Also, she has been threatening me on WeChat. Maria took out the backed up chat data and put it on the table. Not only that, Willow has publicly slandered insulted, and defamed me and my boyfriend on the internet, 
leading the public who don't know the truth to cyberbully. I hope Miss Liu can publicly apologize to us on the internet. George is not your boyfriend. He's mine. You stole him from me. Willow couldn't help but stand up. I instinctively stood in front of Maria. Willow looked up blankly, her eyes slightly red, looking at me somewhat pleadingly. George, say something. Is she lying? I looked at Willow and said coldly, Miss Liu, we have been broken up for about half a year. Your behavior has posed a serious threat to me and my girlfriend. I hope you can apologize publicly. A shiny tear appeared in Willow's deep eye sockets. She squatted down with her hands covering her face, her back convulsing violently, and the sound of sobbing came. After completing the wrecker, Maria and I left the police station. Listening to the crying from inside the room, a strange emotion surged in my heart. Five years ago, we were inseparable, deeply in love. Five years later, everything has changed, and everything has come to an end. The atmosphere unconsciously became oppressive. Maria looked at me and raised her eyebrow slightly. I'm just an ordinary person who got involved. Mr. Wan, you should treat me to a meal to make up for it. You haven't spoken for so long. You're not reluctant, are you? For a moment, the oppressive atmosphere vanished. I was somewhat amused and shook the car keys in my hand. Let's go. Let's treat Miss Yu to a big meal. Soon, Willa's punishment came down. She was detained for 10 days and fined for fabricating facts and slandering others. And she was required to publicly apologize on the internet, on my side. I also issued a statement and sent a few of the most active leading big Vs to jail on the grounds of spreading rumors. With a two-pronged approach, public opinion quickly reversed. Netizens have criticized Willow's behavior. When public opinion was one-sided, Maria bought a yacht and invited me to go out to sea to relax. There were dozens of people in the group, all good friends in the circle. The deck of the yacht was covered with exquisite wooden floors. I stood on the deck with a glass of wine, admiring the blue sea and the brilliant sunset. Why did you come out? A languid female voice came from behind. I turned my head slightly and looked back. Maria was coming over with a glass of wine. I took a sip of wine. It's a bit stuffy inside. I came out for some fresh air. My dad just sent me a message. He can't stop praising you. Home. The climax of the public opinion war. Launching the products of the two companies cooperating, using the hot to open the market for the goods, the current sales are unprecedentedly high. I slightly curved my lips, without saying a word. Maria looked at the sunset and sighed. After a while, flowers always bloom towards the sun, and people always move forward. I looked at the slight tension on Maria's face and her covert advice, and suddenly laughed, what are you laughing at? Maria's ears turned slightly red, and she looked a bit embarrassed. I've let go a long time ago. I looked at Maria and said word by word. I'm not a heartless person, but I'm not a sentimental person either. Let alone this kind of excessive sentimentality after breaking up. It's good that you can understand. Maria awkwardly smoothed her hair. I? Maria paused, just about to say something else. Watch out. Suddenly, a big wave came from the sea. The yacht was hit violently and Maria was also hit by the inertia. I instinctively held her, and for a moment, the warmth from my shoulder linger, my heartbeat seemed to stop for a beat, and then vibrated rapidly like a drum. After everything calmed down, Maria emerged from my arms, the faint blush on her face revealing her inner unrest at this moment. I reassured her, Maria, it's okay. She looked up at me, a strange emotion flashing in her eyes, as if staking everything, she leaned her head up and touched my lips. It was just a simple touch, but it made me stunned for a moment. However, the next moment it was as if the valve had been opened instantly. The kiss fell gently. The tender kiss gradually turned into intertwining between the lips. In a daze, the strange tide gradually drowned my senses. After a long time, the lingering kiss on the lip finally stopped. Maria was panting slightly, staring at my eyes. She hooked up a smile and said, Are we getting real from pretending? My hand was holding her waist, but I really fell in love. The sea breeze was gently blowing, and the sea was rippling, in the vast space, I heard Maria say. What a coincidence, so did I. After a short journey, Maria and I started planning the specific engagement time and wedding planning. But to my surprise, the first thing Willow did when she got out of the detention center was to come to me. George, let's talk. She stood next to my car, pleading. Sorry, I'm very busy. I signaled the driver to drive the car away, but Willow stopped in front of the car. I won't bother you too much. 
I'm going back to my hometown soon. I just want to say goodbye to you and the past. After Willow came out of the detention center, she was no longer as spoiled and willful as before. She seemed to have been crushed by something. I glanced at my watch and said lightly, Five minutes, Willow said with a bitter smile. If I hadn't sent the wrong message back then, would our ending be different from now? Unfortunately, there are no ifs in the world, and there is no regret medicine. Everyone has to pay the price for what they do. Willow, the wrong message you sent was just an opportunity. Maybe even God wanted us to break up. Willow suddenly shook her head in panic. No. No. I didn't really want to break up with you. I just felt that we had been together for five years, too long, and there was no passion as before. Love was worn away. All that was left was habit. Her lips were pursed. And although she tried hard not to cry, tears kept falling. Too long. I said mockingly, love is always love. You think it's a habit, then the position of love is vacated. So another person will appear. So once love turns into a habit, then this relationship has come to an end. And you think so because you are tired. She sobbed. I don't know why it's like this. It was Anna who told me, she said. You are older than me. You have more choices. If I do a little, you will. You will pay more attention to me. But I don't know why. The more I get to the end, the more presumptuous I become. Until I push you to someone else with my own hands. By the end of Willow's speech, she was incoherent and crying incessantly. I looked at Willow expressionlessly and said sarcastically, Did I not give you enough sense of security? So you have to listen to others. No, I don't know why I was so bewitched at that time. I really regret it. I interrupted her. Five minutes is up. Next month is my engagement banquet with Maria. I'm not so magnanimous to invite you. And everything between us has ended. I hope you don't disturb us in the future. Willow stood there as pale as death. I raised my hand to signal the driver to drive. As the car passed Willow, I heard her whisper, I'm sorry, whether to you or Maria. The cool night breeze blew by. Everything was over. But a new chapter is just beginning.